History of Gaming Consoles. When's the last time you played a game? For me, I know I could never say more than a day. Perhaps you have apps on your phone that you play, or some sort of computer game. Perhaps you're a hardcore gamer and you even play with a console or an expensive PC. Personally, my favorite. No matter who you are, you've probably played a lot of video games. In this video, we're going to quickly discuss a long line of home gaming consoles. I'm using the timeline on Wikipedia, modifying it a bit, and skipping most handheld devices and consoles that I deem generally insignificant. Why don't we begin way back in the autumn of 1972. Magnavox releases what is generally called the first gaming console. The Odyssey was very simple in comparison to literally anything recently. It operated without a central processing unit and instead used ball-based logic processes. There were several games released on the Odyssey which used printouts that you would place physically on the television screen itself in order to get the full graphics. The different cartridges that you inserted only rewired a little part of the motherboard to get the desired results from its ball-based logic. In 19 in 1975, Magnavox released both the Odyssey 100 and the Odyssey 200, which allowed up to four players at once. In that same year, Universal Research Labs released the video action. Executive Games also made electronic television tennis, and Atari Pong begins to sell at Sears. From there on all the way up to 1982, companies begin releasing their own game consoles because of the previous successes. In 96, Atari releases Super Pong 10. In 77, Coleco releases the Telestar Arcade, an interesting first-generation console that uses a couple of arcadey things like a steering wheel and a play revolver. In 77, Atari released the VCS, which was also called the VCS 2600 or just the Atari 2600. This console featured a simple joystick as one might imagine it nowadays, which later became a huge trademark for Atari. In the same year, Coleco also released Combat, a console made to look like the controls of a tank might, with your television being the eyes. After a few more Pongs and Telestars came the Milton Bradley Vectrix in 1982. The Vectrix was a second generation console that actually had the television included and sat upright. It had a Motorola 68A09 processor clocked at 1.5 megahertz, 1 kilobyte of RAM, 8 kilobytes of ROM, and the cartridge ROM was 32 kilobytes. Also in 82, Atari released the predecessor to the 2600, the Atari 5200 Super System. It featured a joystick and a trackball for the controller and contained an MOS 6502C CPU clocked at 1.79 MHz. It sold over 1 million units. In June of 1989 comes one of the only handheld consoles that we will be talking about, the Game Boy, successor to the Game & Watch. It was a small handheld device with a custom 8-bit sharp processor clocked at 4.19 MHz, 8 kilobytes of internal SRAM, and a 160 by 144 reflective LCD screen. In August of the same year, the Sega Genesis was released, better known by places outside America as the Mega Drive. It sold an estimated 40 million units. The release of Sonic the Hedgehog greatly increased the popularity of the Genesis in the United States, competing with Mario and other mascots. Sonic was impressive because he could move very fast while most consoles and games couldn't move much at all. You could push Sonic across several screens in a few seconds at full speed, which made the franchise explode. Sonic is not as popular today because the speed is not as surprising anymore. It actually is quite easy to program something that moves quickly across multiple screens in 3D today, while most computers can also handle the pressure. In 91, the Super Nintendo was released, and in 95, the Sony PlayStation was released. From then on, you can pretty much guess the timeline as you've probably been alive for the majority of it. The Nintendo 64 was released in 96, and in 99, the Dreamcast. In year 2000, the sequel to the PlayStation, the PlayStation 2, was released, which was my first console. In 2001, the Game Boy Advance, Xbox, and GameCube were released. 2004, the Nintendo DS. In 2005, the PSP and Xbox 360. 2006, DS Lite, PS3, and Nintendo Wii. The top selling console of all times, which as you probably know, features intricate handheld motion controls. In 2012 and 13 are what are called the next-gen consoles. These include the Wii U, Xbox One, and PlayStation 4. In comparison, 
just the hard drive on the PS4 is over 8,000 times longer than the ROM drive on the Atari 2600. The PS4 also supports SSD or solid state drive, which is essentially like a giant jump drive that is sometimes 10 times faster than a typical hard drive. The next generation consoles also feature complex CPU and GPU relationships and layouts for completing specific tasks. As you can see, the advantages in console technology are coming at an outstanding pace. This has been Cole from Cole and Jordan Studios. If you liked this video, please leave a like below. Feel free to subscribe to our account or leave a comment below if you want more videos like this. Hope you learned something today, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.